is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Ken Coleman, number one best-selling author, Ramsey personality, host of the Ken Coleman Show, talking about your career, your job, and how you make money, is my co-host today, so we'll be taking your calls about career, job, and how you make money, as well as your life and your money and how you spend it. We're here to help. Open phones at 888-825-5225. So Ken and I and Dr. John Deloney were among the team that was with a group of radio executives uh, in Cape Cod this last week. And on our way up there, I stopped and spoke at Liberty University, Ken's alma mater, and I got to speak at their convocation, which is about 12,000 students in an arena. It's a bit of a trip and a lot of fun. And my friend Jonathan Falwell invited us up, and that's the second time I've gotten to speak there. It was a pretty incredible thing. So been off the microphone for about a week, and it uh, feels good to be back in this seat. Yes. So, Kent, had you ever been to Cape Cod before? I uh, had only gone one time uh, when I was uh, in my 20-something. I was working for the governor of Virginia, and I was in charge of getting publicity for the renovation of the governor's mansion, and I came up with a bright idea at 23 to get Bob Vila to come down. Oh. And so they, they, they got a hold of him, the, the, the governor's PR department, and they said, all right, you got to fly up with the pilot the governor's pilot and get him so it was a quick visit it was in get bob oh, you on landed the plane. you touched you touched the base and kept running so technically yes oh that doesn't officially count. no so it was a it's wonderful a great story time. but it doesn't count i thought you'd appreciate it so yes i <laughs> uh, had only been there for moments if you will and it was wonderful it was uh what a wonderful place you know it's, it's when you get around this great country and in the world you know, it's amazing how beauty is everywhere and the uniqueness of the culture. It's just such so a lovely place. Two of the ships yeah. in the Boston Tea Party were Nantucket whaling ships. Yeah. And so we're, we're on Nantucket for a couple of days before we went over to Cape Cod with all these radio people and got to see all that whole whaling background. I mean, you know. I still I think of Massachusetts more in modern terms, uh, but it really is, in a sense, the heart of oh. obviously the Puritans on Plymouth Rock. That wild turkey are still running around on Cape Cod, thinking, "Boy, you you guys just had not figured this out. Still, have you? This is Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner." And so, um, but it is, and the people are just wonderful. We so love you, Massachusetts. Nice. We're, yeah. we're, we're we're I got to meet a lot of people up there that were um, listeners and viewers of the show, and uh, a lot a lot of fun. I just really yeah. it's always does uh, does me good to go to a place that's not like home and find there's good people there too you know there's people that you love there too there's people that you're instant friends with and you have an instant bond with there and um everything from the boat captain that took us out to look at the houses and we about froze our butts off it was raining and cold all the way to uh he he was a listener you know that kind of thing all the way around to the um uh you know, it, it, a lot of times it's not the pretty people. It, it's the people that do all the real work mm. that we run into that are listening. It's true. And I guess you're pretty people, too. Don't misunderstand. I was but I'm say, just saying, yeah. you know, it's not like the rich and famous run up to no. us. It's the people. It's the lady waiting at our table that runs up to us. It's How about the, the uh, owner? We, just, we the, love that. Uh, yeah. The owner of a little shop uh, a little dress called shop. Sunset. Uh, Sundance. Sundance. Thank you. Sundance. Yeah, don't mess that up. I messed it up already. It's too late. Yeah. Uh, Sundance right there in downtown Chatham. And find, come to find out she's going to be with us. Uh, at Entree Leadership Master Series, our training camp event for leaders. She's going to be with us in November my at Amelia wife. Island. I mean, so cool to run into her. It was yeah, so My wonderful. wife wandered into that little, that wonderful <laughs> store, and uh, you would have thought Elvis came in the building. It was uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. They, they're so sweet. Just nice lovely, people. Lovely, lovely folks. I just, we loved it. It was a lot of fun. Got Good to see you, Cape Cod. Something we have never, yes. place never been. Good, good for a hillbilly to get out and see places, you know. I've got to mention, so. Dave, that the chowder or the Uh-oh. chowder Chata. And the lobster. The lobster and the chowder. I got to tell you, we had a couple of meals that uh, blew my mind with the I'm fresh lobster and the chowder was unbelievable. So shout out to the amazing coma. food. A couple of... Uh, a couple of hundred dozen of oysters might have been, you know, <laughs> oh my gosh, just uh, a lot of fun, you guys. Thank you. We enjoy being with you guys and uh, enjoy being with you guys right now. Charlotte, North Carolina, Veronica is with us. Hey, Veronica, how are you? 
Hi, Ruth. Hi, Dave. Sorry. Thanks for taking my call. How are you? Great. How can we help? Um, yeah, so I'm newly married. Um, my husband and I, we have debt because I went to college, um, didn't know any better, and got myself into debt. Um, however, I've been paying off my debt snowball now for at least, I guess, a year and a half, two years now. Good. Um, my husband and I, we, yeah, um, my husband and I, we recently got married. Uh, when I met him, he was on route to be to become a chiropractor. So it takes about 10 years to become a chiropractor. He's pretty much in the middle of that. Um, so he's paid it off so far, cash. Um, but now we're married. He has debt, you know, because he married me. And then we have a fully funded emergency fund. And so we're kind of in a bind wondering what we should do with um, the money that we would put into debt. Should we continue putting that into the debt or should we save it? Um, should we put it in an investment vehicle for uh, for his schooling? We're kind of not sure what to do right now. The first step of avoiding uh, of getting out of debt is avoiding new debt so you have to manage your cash to go to school without mm-hmm. it without any debt that's your first goal yes whatever's left yes. over after you manage your cash to go to school whatever's left over you can pay on the debt okay but it'd be crazy for you to pay off your student loan debt and him turn around and borrow to go be a chiropractor you're just swapping hands yeah, 100%. Yeah, so no need to do that. We're just going to slow the debt reduction on yours enough to cash flow his chiropractic school. Is that? Am I answering this? Is this what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm. I, another thing we were thinking about, and I don't know if it would be too late considering that he's already in school, but we've considered maybe like ESAs or 529 plans or something like that. I don't know. Um, I don't know too much about it. So yeah. I don't think that's necessary because like- it's not a th- – those work best when you have a long time horizon because they grow tax-free. But if you're going to leave it in there a year, tax-free growth is not relevant. Yeah. Okay. Veronica, you mentioned savings. Uh, you mentioned emergency fund. Are you talking about our baby step one, $1,000, or is there more in there? Oh, no. It's uh, the baby step – one okay. emergency fund. Okay, so you don't have any additional yeah. cash that you guys have saved up right now? No, we have put it all gotcha. into debt or into school. Yeah, okay. well, Great. it all Got goes it. into school first, yep. and then if there's anything left, it goes on your debt. And make sure if you do need to pull some back through the summer to get ready for the fall, that's allowed because that's just cash management to go to school. But we're not going to pile up like $100,000 in a savings account just so we can make sure he goes to school. That's not what we're suggesting yeah. here. But but you guys got to just look out into the future, look at your income versus your outgo and go, okay, here's how we're going to cash flow this. And any spillover, then you throw it at the next thing at the, at the debt is what we're going to do. So good question. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, my co-host today. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2, and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you. Ken 
Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. No parent ever wants their child to experience the panic of being unprepared for an emergency. But teaching your kids how to be smart with money, this can be a big job in this crazy world we live in. With our digital self-study courses, we got your back. You can rest assured that your teen will know the right way to handle money. And then in five or ten years when they get married, they'll come on here and do their debt-free scream and tell people they're an everyday millionaire, a Baby Steps millionaire. No instructors needed. If your teen has a tablet or a computer, they're all set. Text SELF-STUDY to 33789. SELF-STUDY to 33789. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your window blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY. You'll get the best deal at a great American company, Blinds.com. Today's question comes from Robert in Alabama. I'm a couple of years into a middle management position in a tech field at a Fortune 100 company. I dislike the politics and endless meanings of management and miss being able to work on solving technical Mm -hmm. issues. My salary didn't change much when I moved into this new role. How do I talk to my bosses about stepping back into my non-management position, and is this even a good idea? Happens a lot with yeah, tech. All the time. And first of all, it is a good idea that you realize, hey, I don't want to be in a leadership role. I want to solve technical problems. That's really key. Uh, so then it's just a function of being clear, sitting down with your leaders and going, hey, uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity to be promoted. Uh, here's the deal. Uh, it's not for me. I'm not cut out for it. It's not you guys. It's me. Uh, it's not my jam. What I do love more than anything, and I now realize it, is just being in the trenches, getting my hands dirty, solving technical problems. But I know that I took this. Is there a way that we can can smoothly move me back into that role, uh, I'd be grateful. I think that's your approach. It's about posture, and it's about just owning the fact that, hey, uh, you took a promotion, which is the normal human thing to do, but it's not the best fit for you. Yeah, and the weird thing is you might actually make more money as a maker. That's, that's exactly um, right. People that are in the make that are makers, they're creatives, they're tech, uh, coders, writers, architects, um, uh, salespeople, uh, it's not unusual at all in business for us uh, in leadership to do the exact wrong thing, and that is because they're good at their discipline, we think that means they should be a leader. And leadership is a separate discipline. Yes. It's a different kind of thing. And you, not everyone has to aspire to be in leadership to make a great income, to have a very fulfilling career, to uh, to, to, to win. So the first time I ever saw this, my, my parents owned a real estate company when I was growing up. And real estate, residential real estate is the world's worst at it. They, as soon as somebody starts selling a bunch, they make them sales manager. Mm-hmm. And it's a completely different set of skills to be sales manager than to be a salesman. You know, selling houses is different than managing people who sell houses. It really is. Now, you need to know some of the technical things to be able to lead well, and that's in your given space. But um, there, there are a lot of uh, residential real estate agents that sell houses that make a lot more than their manager makes. Yeah, and, and so if we just look at what we love to do. So we teach this here at Ramsey Solutions. Talent is what you do best. Passion is work you love. Here's the reality. Leadership is work. It is a form. It is a function. It is a skill, as Dave said as well. And so if you don't love leading people and serving people, there's no shame in that. But Dave, as you know, getting promoted, which is stage five of the seven stages to doing work you love, is getting promoted and many times As you win, people will go, oh, well, we're going to put you in management. Make sure that you talk to other people who lead. Do a little homework and go, hey, what do you love most about leading? What do you like least about it? And and really soak in it and to make sure that it is something that you will really want to do because, you know, it is one of the most difficult things in the world to do um, because it is involving humans. And we humans uh, can be great and we humans (laughs) can be awful. Business is great until people get involved. (laughs) All right. uh, Up next is going to be Chris in Los Angeles. Hi, Chris. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave, how are you doing? Great, man. What's up? Um, There's a couple things. One, uh, you've done some great work, and in some ways, I love you. In other ways, you're stupid and arrogant. Okay. How can I help you? All right. By the way, that's a great way to start any conversation right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my first question would be, are you smarter than Warren Buffett? How old are you? Because you push, I'm 35. Okay, cool. 
So, so what, I'm sorry, I, let's stop just a second. What's the point of your call? How, can I, how can I help you? The, the point of my call is you push people into actively managed funds when over time, if you pushed people into an index fund, they would have about 50% more money when they retire. Okay. Um, not sure where you went to school for your math class, but you failed. Um, uh, the, um, actually compounding costs no, I, I understand. add up Listen, dramatically. I've been te- I got socks older than you. I've been teaching this a while, okay? So uh, th- this is how this works. Now, here's the thing. You're basically become doing what Bogle said, and Bogle invented a wonderful thing with the index fund, and the S&P 500 funds are wonderful. The index funds are wonderful. Uh, they are not a cure-all, and there's no possible scenario, unless you're an absolute idiot in picking your actively managed funds, that you would have 50% more in an index fund. Now, the actual facts are more than 50% of the funds underperform the indexes. That is a true fact, to your point. That's a different fact. It, it, the, yeah. the fact is 2%, 2%. Above, if you have a 7% return versus a 9% return, which you have the compounding cost bringing your return down by 2%, mm-hmm. over 50 years, mm-hmm. you'll have half the money. Do the math on that, well, Google that, it. That, that would be true, too, but none of those numbers you're using are accurate in terms of what the S&P has produced or what actively managed funds have produced. The actively managed funds that I personally have picked have outperformed the indexes by more than 2% as a portfolio because it's fairly easy to study mutual funds and pick them that outperform. But if you're not going to study them and you're not going to have a good advisor in your corner, then using the index funds is a great idea. Here's what we actually found in the real world versus um, versus someone's hypothetical vacuum discussion of theory. Okay, As we studied the largest study of millionaires, 90% of them a largest study of millionaires ever done, over 10,000 of them, 90% of them became wealthy without becoming, without inheritance. The inheritance did not cause their wealth. And almost, Dave, all, and almost all of them did it with their 401k with actively managed funds. Now, some of the funds actually underperformed the S&P. And some of them overperformed the S&P. And some of them used an S&P because a, a good 500 fund was in, their, um, was in their portfolio as well. Now, let's go back to Warren Buffett for just a second. Are you aware that Warren Buffett does not have all of his investments in index funds? Of course. Okay, he has good. it in, so, in a holding in, what, company. I'm not sure. Other than the fact that he has stated that the average guy, because he's a Bogolite, the average guy should buy index funds instead of actively managed funds. Other than that, he doesn't actually do what he says he's going to do with that. He actually has an actively managed portfolio called Berkshire Hathaway. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am. And he's doing it with with the money he's leaving to his wife when he dies. Well, that's fine. I mean, where where the money's going is not not relevant to the mathematical discussion. The mathematical discussion, Chris, is simply this. Warren Buffett made comments frequently about the average guy should buy index funds. And I really don't have a problem with that. You can get rich with index funds. Not 50% richer. That's complete BS. But, you know, that is it, true. But, if you, but you can get rich with index funds. I don't have any problem with that at all. If that makes me arrogant, fine. But I think we're confused as to who's arrogant on this call, brother. I think that's the issue. I've got a book suggestion for Chris. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a classic. You should read it. No. I mean, it's good luck with it. I hope it works out for you. But um, here's the thing. I've been doing what I've been doing for 30 years, Chris, and it's made me a multi, 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 multi multi-millionaire. And I invest in actively managed growth stock mutual funds that outperform the indexes across the four types we teach. I actually invest in what I tell people to do. I don't tell people to do something while I'm investing in something else. Different than my friend Warren. This is The Ramsey Show.
of Ramsey Solutions on the debt free stage. Brandon and Jenna are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Hey so good. Dave, good. Good to have y'all. Where do y'all live? We're from Virginia. Okay, cool. What part? Northern Virginia area. Ah, the Alexandria, like in that area. Okay, yeah. cool. Yep. Welcome. How much debt have you paid off? Two hundred and seven thousand dollars. Woo! How long did that take? Uh, Forty nine months. Look at you and. Uh, what was your range of income during that f- four years? Yeah, Dave, we started at 91000 We went up to about 120000 and then back down to 93000 Works for me. What do y'all do for a living? I'm a physical therapist. Mm-hmm. I stay at home with the kids. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. So that's the reason you were working and then you went back home with the kids? Yes. All right. That's the up and down part of the income. <laughs> yeah, good, good. What kind of debt was the 207000 Yeah, so we um, most of it was student loans. Mm-hmm. And we had a car payment, but uh, uh-huh. we also cash flowed uh, two interstate moves and wow. having two babies. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, lots of moving, lots of stuff happening. Mm-hmm. Wow. Good for you guys. That's amazing. Thanks. So what happened uh, 48 months ago that caused you to get on this Ramsey journey? Well, we got married. A little bit. <laughs> and um, yeah, I was just, uh, I was putting all of our debt together in a spreadsheet and I felt overwhelmed and um, just uh, kind of scared. Yeah. And uh, it is terrifying. She had um, <laughs> she had your your book, the Total Total Money Makeover. Mm-hmm. And one night I just I didn't want to go to sleep, and I just found that book and started reading it, and I finished it in one night. Wow. And <laughs> um, and she hadn't finished it, and so we we read it together, and we were both on board. Wow. So, okay. So that's intense. Yeah. Uh, you, you kind of stay up most of the night, read the book and then, okay, Hey babe, you got to finish it. What did you start doing? I mean, how, how intense was it? I'm just curious. Did you dive in all in right away? Did you have to ease into it? What did that look like? I think we were, we were both pretty excited about it. Um, we, you know, we were reading all the stories and, and seeing what people could do. And we felt like it was something that we, we really needed at least to try and see what would happen. The hardest part was <laughs> putting all of our savings into the, yeah. the debt snowball. And that was, the, that was the hard part of, you know, going. How much was that? It was probably like $10,000, I think. Okay. And you did this yeah. right after getting married? About two months, yeah. Two months, okay. Yeah. So you've been married about four years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. A little over four years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Way to mm-hmm. go. Very cool. So you say, okay, uh, th- this is overwhelming. This is scary. I stayed up all night. We're going to go all in. We're going to attack. We're going to take the money out of the savings. Oh, God, hold my breath. I don't know if I can do this or not. Ah! And here we go. And wide open. How long before you started feeling confident? Yeah, I think when we start, when we started paying off like the smaller mm-hmm. loans mm-hmm. Um, and we could see like that zero balance. Mm-hmm that's what really gave us like the confidence to keep going Mm -hmm. just keep crossing one more off the list yeah and he he had his (laughs) he had his uh Spreadsheet. of spreadsheets of and course. he would reprint them every time we paid something off so we could see the zero balance i like it i like it that that's true there's something about the human brain that even if it's a little one you you take it off you go this might work <laughs> this might work yeah. uh, it's called hope right yes a- and that hope starts to grow the more successes you have congratulations thank you so much thank i'm you. so proud of y'all well <laughs> done what do you tell people the secret to getting out of debt is Communication. I think that um, it really helped that we were both on the same page from the get-go, and you know it really um, helped bring us closer together as a couple. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Very fun. And, and the debt snowball. What do you say to other couples? There's other couples listening right now. Maybe there's uh, one half of a couple listening right now, and they're going, I'm on board, but my spouse isn't, or I don't even know. We can't get through a conversation about the kid's school without an argument. What would you say to them to encourage them? Um, pray. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I know, Dave, you preach this, um, everything through through Christ Jesus, and mm-hmm. Um, you know, religion is huge for us. Um, we believe, we believe in God, we believe in Christ and, and we know that through him, we were, we were able to do this for Mm. sure. Very good. That's powerful. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. (laughs) Yeah. Excellent. Well done, you guys. What was the hardest part for you guys? 
Sticking with it, Dave. It was a long time. Yeah, four <laughs> years. A long time, but people can't keep their eyes on the ball for four minutes in this culture. <laughs> yeah, that was tough. We I, had we had back and forth though. Like sometimes it was hard for me. Sometimes it was hard for him. And so, you know, just kind of supporting each other and reminding each other this is our goal. This is what we're we're shooting for. And you know, we were just talking about this. Like, you know, last night, um, I think it was like two years ago, we, I just kind of mentioned, you know, oh, in two years, you know, we have our debt paid off. We can go do our debt-free scream. And that was that's what, what, what my motivation was, um, listening to other people do their debt-free scream and hearing their stories gave me motivation to keep going. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. Well, I'm so proud of y'all. Well done. Who was your biggest cheerleaders outside the two of you? I think our parents yeah. on both sides, yeah. they were pretty supportive. They encouraged us. And so most of the two was student loans, most of the 200000 yeah. and a whole big chunk of that was PT, had to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Physical therapy school, yeah. Yes. That's real. Good. And you yeah. did it. Yes. How old are yes. you? 32. 32. <laughs> and you're debt free. Yeah. You're we weird. It's official. <laughs> I love it. Well done, you guys. Very, very proud of you. We got a copy of uh, the uh, Legacy Journey for you because that's the next chapter in your story to change the legacy of this family you've started. I'm so proud of you. Very, very well done. Sharp couple. Very sharp. Very sharp. <laughs> yes. Also going to give you a copy of Total Money Makeover so you can give it to somebody and keep them up all night. <laughs> yep. <Perfect. laughs> I'm not sure that's positive when your book keeps people from sleeping, but okay, I'll go I'll with it. it. I'll go with it. I'm going with this. I'm yeah, sticking with it. It's like worked that. 10 million times this work, so I'm going with it. Uh, well done, you guys. Brandon and Jenna, Alexandria, Virginia. $207,000 paid off in 49 months, making 91 to 120 to 93. Two babies and two moves cash flowed in the mix. Well done. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're, We're debt-free! Debt yeah! I love it. They're heroes. Yeah. Absolute heroes. People who take control of their own lives in a culture that tells them over and over that it's not their fault, that they are victims. They're the heroes. They're taking control of it. And a big old honking student loan debt. Uh, you know, there's some heroes in the new documentary. Mm. Uh, the Borrowed Future documentary comes out next week. It's on Apple TV, on Google Play. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. You can rent it or buy it anywhere great documentaries are viewed. Um, and you can go to borrowedfuture.com. But in there, there's a, we, we, we are following some heroes that are fighting through astronomical amounts of student loan debt. And uh, I was telling these radio guys we were with this week um, – the biggest problem with building this documentary was to build a story arc uh, because there were too many villains. Mm. Yeah, it's true. The villains are everywhere. It's like uh, the zombie apocalypse or something. There's so many villains in it. But the heroes, the people like Jenna and Bra Brandon, who just paid off 207000 most of which was student loan debt, took them four years to slog through it. They're 32 years old and they're free. Yeah. And they have babies and they're living their life and they're doing well. These are heroes. Uh, there are a lot of people that are that, that the student loan, their student loan situation, regardless of how they got into it, regardless of who you blame for it, are completely overwhelmed and paralyzed. Yeah. And the process works. This is another example of 49 months. That's a long time. 200,000 plus in debt. But you see the emotion on these folks when they share the story and you feel it on them as well because there's no stopping them now. They pushed through, sacrificed for something that is so significantly greater than the challenge that they face. They're so strong, there's no stopping them. Yeah. And you can do it too. Yeah. And, that, and, and like they said, they've learned to communicate about one of life's most difficult subjects. So now you can fight anything. That's they can exactly do anything. Right. I love it. Well done, heroes. I love it. This is The Ramsey Show.
Joining Us America. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Becky is with us in Prescott, Arizona. Hi, Becky. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. Good to talk to you, too. You, too. I'm um, I'm kind of needing your help. I have a daughter who's uh, married and has a little two-year-old, and they both are teachers. She's a stay-at-home teacher online teacher he teaches for for a small public school they would like to buy a home and they really don't have the income to do it and i would like to help but i'd like your advice of what are some possibilities for helping them get a home i know you said don't outright buy it and then have them rent and be tenants because that makes thanksgiving dinner very strange but what what ideas do you have for helping our kids get into a home if they don't have the funds to to get that started. Okay. Well, uh, the first thing is is that if you help someone get into a situation that harms them, that by definition is not helping them. And I think that is the mm-hmm. core of what you're asking is to how to do this wisely so that they're not harmed. But when you say they can't afford it three times in your question, um, that scares me a little. Um, that they just don't make enough to pay the payments we're about to sign them up for. We don't want to do that, right? Right. And I know you say 25% of your take-home yeah. should be what is going towards that house. Yeah. Um, so maybe the way you help yeah, them is you coach them a little on their careers. Maybe the way you help them is we coach them on their budgeting and get them out of debt. They need to be out of debt and have an emergency fund before they talk about buying a house. But if they're managing money really well on their modest income, and they're out of debt and they have their emergency fund and they just don't have enough down payment and you want to give them $100,000 of your $5 million for them to be able to buy a house as a bigger down payment as a gift, I don't have any issue with that at all. I don't want you to give someone, anyone money who's misbehaving with it because you are not blessing them. No, they're doing actually well. I put them through FPU. They have been on a budget. Uh, they are not in debt. They have their uh, emergency fund. Um, but that leap, especially with real estate, uh, and, and tell me this, do you think this is the time to buy it and one should wait uh, w- w- on buying a home? What's your opinion on I- the timing right now? Well, the market's really hot, obviously. It's white hot. And... Um the uh uh it's not the it's not a buyer's market it's a seller's market so it, but mm-hmm. does that mean you can't buy right now no but i mean you just have to be wise don't get in a you, you've seen these movie scenes like with an old jerry lewis movie where somebody gets super excited at an auction and loses their mind and bids like seven times what something's worth that's what some people are doing with houses right now and so you don't want to do that mm-hmm. you don't want to lose your mind And uh, there are people that have lost their minds in this market. Uh, And so if you can be calm and wise and walk away from enough deals to find one that is a reasonable purchase in their situation, then again, it's not you can't say no, don't buy in this market. But it's a difficult market to get a a reasonable to good buy in because it is a seller's market without a doubt. So here's the thing. Um, I had a friend who uh, gave his children the money to pay cash for their first home after Mm -hmm. they were behaving with money wisely and were saving and they were getting ready to just go get a normal mortgage and he just gave them money he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars he had the money it wasn't a big deal and uh so they bought like an eight hundred thousand dollar house or whatever and he just bought it and handed it to him. No strings attached. The only thing he did ask them to do, because he's like you and me, Becky, he's a financial peace university person, right? And he said, um, I, I just want you to sign a letter swearing you'll never borrow money again. That's all I want you to do. So that my grandkids never go in debt if I do if I give a gift that the, this is this lavish. That we truly have broken the chain mathematically on this family tree. And uh and, he, and then he stepped back and was not controlling and didn't interfere in their life, didn't question their vacations or anything else. He just wanted to keep their word, what they said they would do. And uh, that way, that's the last person in his family tree to borrow money. And, you know, those kids, are, those kids were millionaires almost instantaneously as a result because of their, their net worth. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely the right advice. And Becky, you know, uh, they're a young couple. Seems like they're doing all the right things. And and the reality is, is help them be patient. 
and you yourself need to be patient in this time, you know? And so it's, look, it's going to cool off at some point, even if it doesn't, you you have the discipline, like Dave said, to be able to walk away from those deals. And uh, I, I think you're a great lady with a great heart, but you know, this, every young couple wants to get in a house. And the reality is, is that it's never worth getting in a house, but not being able to do what you need to do to take care of it, to be able to, you know, fix it up. And I think that's a temptation right now. And sometimes people are making too big of a, a, a rather too quick of a leap into this. And, and I'll tell you, you have to be real careful of the tendency for control in these situations. Um, it, I, I'll just share with you that, Becky, I think the hardest stage of parenting is when your children are grown because you can no longer tell them what to do. Mm. And you just, ha- you, you know, not if you want, well, you can, you can tell them what to do, but it doesn't work. <laughs> so, but I mean, you know, you just have to, my, I, my kids, thank God, have not done a bunch of stupid stuff, but I'm, I'm of the age that my friends have grown kids that are 35 or 40 years old or, or 25 years old. And the, the kid is off the ranch and, you know, doing stupid stuff and you can't, stupid is not illegal. Mm. And it is very difficult to have good relational boundaries with your grown children for all of us, me included. Um, I do, but my kids have also been taught well enough about boundaries. When I don't, they, they step in and uh, remind me. Uh, but, but if you're going to get in a financial transaction like this where you're giving them some money, then you really got to fight that urge to control the, that urge that does not give you additional rights to speak into their life. You got to cut bait emotionally, walk away, act like for the rest of your life, you didn't give them a dime. Hmm. It's good. And, and here's something else on that line, Dave, I think that you're right about this. You know, a lot of parents, uh, they're still the most influential voice in their adult kid's life. And this young couple's in a good place right now. They don't have debt. They're on a budget. Uh, the emergency they are funds. listening to Becky, and that's yeah, why. Which is great. But don't put pressure on them that already exists from culture, which says, you got to buy a house. You got to buy a house, you know. And, and I think sometimes parents unwittingly uh, will steer kids in the wrong direction just because you feel that cultural pressure as well. They're in good shape, and they've got time. They're a young couple. You know, prior to 1970, uh, for a uh, young married couple to buy a home in their first five years of marriage was highly unusual. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. It was it was highly unusual. Only in the last couple of generations right. have we deemed it mandatory. Yeah, you you know you've been married five minutes. What's wrong with you? Yeah, you know. And I'm not saying Becky's doing that. No, but there's no, a no. thing out there that's that that is that thing. Yeah, it's very real. And, and so just be careful with all of it. But it sounds like she's being very wise. I didn't hear anything in there except she's really worried about them being able to afford the payments they're all about to sign up for. Yeah. And you got to be careful with that one for sure. James is with us in Boise, Idaho. Hi, James. What's up? Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I'll give you a little bit of context uh, here for a minute. So I'll tell you what, go straight to your question so I don't run out of time. Okay, sure thing. So I'm in city government. Uh, I'm required to contribute 9% to a public pension plan. Mm -hmm. On top of that, I do uh, a 457 account. Mm -hmm. My wife contributes to a 403B. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a pretty good amount in those two accounts. However, Mm -hmm. none of them are Roth, obviously. Um, How old are you? So I'm 31. Okay. And your question's what? Is is it advantageous to start a Roth now? Yes. even though the accounts in those pre-taxes are, are pretty good amounts and the compounding interest, obviously. Doesn't matter. I don't, want to, I don't want to flip those to a Roth today. I want you to use money that you would have paid on taxes by doing that to pay off your house. But all your future investing should be in a Roth. Roth okay. always We're, beats traditional. Gotcha. It always okay. beats. From this point forward, from today forward, everything that you can do in a Roth, do it. But I, I would not roll the existing accounts to Roth because that's going to trigger a big tax bill that I don't want you to have to pay a big tax bill while you should be doing other stuff with money other than giving it to the government right now. So let, let's, let's chunk everything we can into the Roth, get that tax-free growth, put yourself in that position. Good question, sir. Thank you for letting me push you to the point because I knew the top of the hour was coming down on me. Ken Coleman, good hour. Thank you, sir. Very well done, James Childs. Kelly Daniels in the booth. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show. Where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. His brand new book, From Paycheck to Purpose, comes out in early November. It is in pre-sale right now. From Paycheck to Purpose, the clear path to work you love. You can get the book and about a couple of hundred dollars worth of extras added in if you go to RamseySolutions.com. All for 20 bucks because we give you lots of goodies to do it and to sell the books in pre-sale. Helps us with uh, hitting the list, the bestseller list, and that helps Ken with the marketing and it helps with the future of the book to launch it out hot. And uh, so we're very intentional about that and we bribe you into helping us. <laughs> yeah. It's mean, a good it's, deal. It's quite a bribe, I must it's say. A, good deal. a lot of good stuff there. A lot of good stuff. And you know what? It's exciting because right now, I mean, we got 55% of Americans are now actively looking to change. And they're saying, hey, now's the time I can do it. And it is. You know, we were talking, you know, uh, earlier about how it's a it's a seller's market in the housing. Well, it's, you know, it's a, buyer, it's a buyer's market for jobs right now. There's so many great opportunities. And uh, we talk about this, you know, all the time at Ramsey Solutions. We're blessed to be a blessing. And it is possible, Dave. The American dream is this is live as it has ever been and let me tell you a huge mistake people are going to make though right now yeah they can jump from one job to another with the exact same skill set mm. doing the exact same thing and make a lot more money than they're making now yep and that's why a lot of people are moving right now because there's a serious labor crisis yep. in america and so people companies are paying unbelievable money to bribe you to get you yep. to leave now here's where the mistake can happen you do it only for the money, and you move from miserable to well-paid miserable. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and then you start worrying about, oh, am I a job hopper? And I get that call all the time. I took the I took the raise, I'm, and I took the influence. I got a, a bump I'm, in I'm position. not worried about that. I'm just telling you, you're looking for happiness in the wrong place when oh, you look yeah. at it in a paycheck. Oh, yeah. yeah, I want you to make more money. There's no sin in making money. Go make some more money. That's a good thing. But also, don't be miserable. If you're miserable now... And you get to do more of miserable. Oh, yeah. you're going to be more miserable. Hundred percent. The high of the promotion and the bigger paycheck wears off pretty quick. Yeah, like thirty-five seconds. Yeah, and so you're exactly right. That is the wrong way to look at it. You've got to love the work, and you've got to be connected to the results. That's passion and mission. It's not enough just to have a talent job, and so that's why we wrote the book. We want people to have income that they want. Make it. And then also the impact. From paycheck to, to purpose. purpose. Yeah, it's the, it's the second part of the title. Hello. Yeah, find something where you love what you're doing, not 100% of the time, where you love the people, but not 100% of the time. If you love 100% of the time, you're just whacked. You're a psychopath. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's some days it just sucks to go to work. Okay, I don't care how much you love what you do. I love what I do. But there's sometimes I don't want to come down here. Not much. But if it gets to be a lot, y'all are in trouble because I ain't coming anymore. Yeah. But the uh, uh, but uh, you know, so you want to find something you, where you love what you do. But that doesn't mean every day is unicorns and, and, no. and skittles, it's no. and rainbows. That's not what it is. And for that matter, Dave, you know, we get this question a lot. Hey, how much of my day can should be in my sweet spot? No. you know, seventy five percent is a good rule of thumb. But the bottom line is, we all have to do stuff that we don't want to do. And to your point, there are some really sucky days. Count on but count on five percent being shoveling manure. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's passion for the work, love of the work itself. It's a missional connection to the results that brings you back. And by the way, we'll take care of all the promotions that you ever need. I mean, when you're on fire and you got the juice, people see that in your eyes and they look at you and they go, this person was born for this. You're never going to have to worry about being promoted and you're not going to get to the end of your life, more importantly, and look back with a bunch of regret. You're going to yeah. say, you know what? I lived well. I'll never forget a buddy of mine that was a career coach in, uh, in a, another generation that does what you do, uh, Dan Miller. Mm. Uh, I remember him coaching a guy one-on-one -on -one who was a heart surgeon and had his dad was a heart surgeon and he was making like $450,000 a year and um, he was so miserable 
he had become addicted to heroin. Wow. And he was shooting it into his ankles, mm. trying to find a vein that couldn't be detected as a doc, right? And he, but he was just so, he, you know, because he became a doctor only because his dad was. Yeah. And he hated every minute of it. Yeah. So it does not matter how much money you make. If you're miserable and you just make more money, you're just more well, you're well financed miserable. Yeah. That's all it is. And so don't do that. From paycheck to purpose. Again, not, 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 we're going to be adults and say everything is not perfect anywhere, but at least find something for God's sakes that you care about, that you're, is your why, it fits into who you are, what you're passionate about, and that's what Ken's whole life is about, is about connecting you to that. From paycheck to purpose, the clear path to doing work you love. It's only $20, and you get over $100 worth of free bonus items at RamseySolutions.com right now. Shay's with us in uh, Gilbert, Arizona. Hi, Shay. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me and taking my call. Sure. Um, I So, long story short, I'm 22 years old, married on baby step number two um, with my debt of our trust. That's 23000 and we bought a home last July. So, my question is, is to set us up kind of for future and to skip baby steps, should we sell our house so we could move on to baby step five or six. And also my motive for this is to buy me a car. I don't have a car to buy me a car in cash and to feel comfortable having kids. We want to have kids um, fairly soon. So, um, and I never want to go back into debt ever. So that's my question. What's your household income? Uh, we make 65, around 65,000 after taxes. Okay. Wow. I usually tell folks not to sell a house unless they just hate their house because it's so expensive emotionally and financially to move. I usually tell you to plow okay. your way through the other stuff. Now, how much debt have you got, at not counting the house? Uh, 23000 yeah. Yeah, and you make sixty six, And you're not working, or he is, or both of you working, or what? We, oh, we, yeah, we're both working. Um, 40 and hours? I, really, I would like, I'm sorry, what was that? Both of you working 40 hours? Yes. What do you all do? Um, he's an HVAC, just started an HVAC, so he's kind of um, going up the ranks, and I'm in real estate. I, I'm a repair coordinator. Okay. And what do you make? Um, I make 50000 And he's making fourteen. Uh, you said sixty five. Yeah, so I, he's making around... Paychecks like thirteen hundred every paycheck. How many paychecks does he get? Once every two weeks. That's thirty thousand. Forty thousand. Um thirty five thirty seven thousand. So okay, so you really are making ninety thousand between the two of you. You have twenty three thousand dollars worth of debt. No, unless you hate your house, I would roll up your sleeves and keep your house and get on a really tight beans and rice rice and beans budget scorched earth quit going out to eat girl get yourself on a budget and both of you take all the ot you can get let's get the stupid student loan paid off and then let's save up some emergency fund and talk about buying you a car and, and starting babies Stop paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Coleman Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Again, get that new book from Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Work You Love, comes out in about a month 
And uh, actual street date on it is November... The 9th. November the 9th. November the 9th. I've got all these middle of the month uh, milestones happening in my life, and uh, that's one of them. And then the middle of this month, which is next week on the 13th, I guess it is, Borrowed Future comes out. Uh, it's 14th. See, I told you. I don't, I've got them all confused. Can't remember any of my kids' birthdays. But um, <laughs> there you go. So Borrowed Future, our new documentary on the epic failure of the student loan world and how it has taken advantage of America uh, and how it has to stop, by the way. Uh, you're going to be so pissed off when you watch this documentary. It's going to blow your mind. I thought these villains were evil, but they are so delightfully evil that they make nonstop viewing possible. You will just go, oh, gosh. Uh, and the villain, by the way, is not the student. I'll just I'll just go ahead and spoiler alert that. So Borrowed Future. Uh, everywhere great documentaries are shown, including borrowedfuture.com, uh, Apple TV, Google Play, Amazon Prime, just wherever you uh, people that are untethered now. Is that what you call it? I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. Is that what you call it, James? Is it untethered? When you're No, that's not what it's called. When you get rid of the cable, what do you call it? There's a thing you call you call that something. You don't know either. I thought that's what it was actually. Oh, okay. I was with you. Then you threw some self. That sounds on right. Me. I haven't. I mean, I had cable for a long time. Except anything, for now. Anything culturally relevant, it, my yeah. self doubt's very high because right. I'm just not. <laughs> nor do I give a. Nor do I give a rip. Yeah, so. un- he, he 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 confirmed. It is okay. I, I got it right. We're ding, untethered ding. except now we've got all the things. You've got all the different well, yeah, things individually. I mean, individually. you got to go to 14 different places. It's like to a get, buffet. But, well, I mean, hey. That's what happened when cable came in. Yeah, cutting the cord had, is another yeah, one. We had cutting the cord. Cutting the cord. Thank you. That's much better. That is accurate. I knew it wasn't right. I could feel it in my bones. All right. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, when I was a kid, you had three good channels and one that you really had to spin the rabbit ears and the oh, yeah. kid had to stand on their head and all that. Oh yeah. Uh, that was always the weak PBS station, right? <laughs> and so. Um, yeah, they always had no no wattage. And so, did you ever have the tin foil? My mom and well, dad my, brought I mean, out my the old dad tin would make foil us stand there and the hold ears. it because we were an extension to the antenna. Right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we started putting antenna up on the house, and then we started putting them up on towers outside the house. Rednecks built huge towers to put our antennas on, and our CB radios were on there too. All right, Travis is with us in Louisville, Kentucky. Hey, Travis, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Travis, hey, how you guys doing? Good, man. What's up? Hey, I just got a quick question, um, and I don't know how much you can give me insight on it, but we are trying to decide when and if we should pull our kids out of public schools and send them to like a private Christian school. And I just kind of wanted to get your uh, your view on that. Okay. Um, the first thing is uh, you cannot permanently damage your family financially for this. And so this is an emotional subject, and uh, it, it can be bucketed for some people in the same bucket of adoption or infertility treatment or going to a private school that has a big name on it, uh, like uh, MIT or Harvard. And they go, it's worth any amount of money to live your life. And, hey, hey. and you start spinning like you're in Congress, Okay. Right, I and understand that. You yep. can't. Okay, so you, you, if you, yeah, I got to keep away from those emotions. So, a, we're going to stipulate you can afford it, and then there's a discussion to be had. Yeah. Um, my kids were private or were public school kids. I was a public school kid. You were a public school kid. Your kids are in private school. I was private Christian school. Oh, you are. Yep. K- oh, and now your kids are. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, so it is personal. So let's let's just talk about this, Travis. Can you can you afford this school that you're looking at? Yes, I believe we can. That's another kind of a follow-up question that I'll go ahead and do is my wife is a teacher, and uh, she would be making the transition also, but they currently don't have any uh, permanent teaching positions available, so she would have to take on what they're calling like a permanent substitute role. But they all they give you know all employees of the private school a discount on tuition. Once she would become a teacher, the tuition becomes 50% off. Yeah, yeah. but 50% so off of too much is just a little too much. Right, right. I get it. I get it. I just wanted to make sure you were aware. So you can afford it with the 50% off and with her cut in pay? Current. Okay. Right. Yes. With her cut in pay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because yeah. if they're cutting her pay 100000 which is not happening, and uh, you're going to, you know, and, and you're going to save 10000 on tuition, that math doesn't work. 
Right, I know, I get it. She's gonna. She, they're only gonna cut the pay as of right now. We know because of the, the substitute role. Once it gets back to the no, 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 no. I'm talking about position. the school she's leaving to the school she's going to. How much is her pay dropping? It, for, at the beginning, it'll go from about forty to around twenty-five. I think. Okay, she so lost fifteen grand. How much did you save in tuition? She'll save fifty percent of the tuition. Of how but much? The thing is, is when fifty percent um, of like tuition is how much? Um, 70, so 7,500, so say 32. Okay. About $3,700. Okay. So you lost 15, but you gained 3,700. Right. It's still a pretty heavy loss. Nothing right. to brag about. Yeah. I, I, in this situation, Travis, I'd have her stay there, uh, where she is or get another day job until the position opens up, a full-time position opens up at the private Christian school because yeah, you, you know, you're, you're still going backwards. You don't need to. The, the, the pay cut on right, her I, is, is a bigger cut. deal than the, than the tuition cost for you of 7,500 bucks. What is your income? Uh, around, around a hundred. Okay. So you can afford to send a kid for 7,500. You got one kid going? No, it'll be two. Okay, so fifteen thousand out of a hundred, you can do that. Okay, if and and yep. she makes uh, forty, and so you make one hundred forty thousand dollars income. But I wouldn't take a forty to a twenty five pay cut to save three thousand bucks, or or even seven thousand bucks. That doesn't come out. Right. It okay. doesn't, it, unless she's just miserable and it's part of her, you know, it's a move for other reasons and those kinds of things. But we can talk about that as a side issue. Anyway, that, that's the right. math part of the thing. And that, that's kind of the foundational issue for me. Now, once you've said that, then, then why do you move a kid to Christian school? Now, what I will tell you is this. I made the mistake. Our kids were in a private Christian school for two years when, uh, when they were their very first two years of school. And we barely could afford it. I mean, we were, we were, we believed and we believed and we believed. And the mistake I made was my fault. It was not the school's fault and it was not the Christian education's fault. It was my fault was that I was so stupid that I thought teachers and kids at Christian schools would all behave. Gotcha. That's a dumb assumption. They don't. Some of the kids are actually better at being sneaky. Like Ken right. Coleman was. No, okay. oh. <laughs> that cannot that be con- kid? that cannot be confirmed You're a or denied. Kid. No, I was a good. You were one. worse. You were no. a Christian school kid and a pastor's kid. That's the definition of sneaky, folks. This is what's called fake news. You just heard Dave <laughs> say it's all fake news. Yeah, I, you know, I am curious. What is the driving force? If you're comfortable sharing with us, why this move? Um, I just. I just, you know, I, I don't want to be too political sounding or anything like that. I just have, we just have some strong beliefs that a, a Christian education would be really beneficial to our kids. Well, you think the culture's lost its dadgum mind, and you're probably right. Well, yeah, I definitely, I definitely do that. Yes. Okay, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. No, but what I, I want to challenge you, what I want to challenge you is, is that it's, you're, you're not going to escape that. You're still going to have to parent them in this toxic culture. Right. Oh, yes. Yes, I agree. And I was, I, that's the mistake I made. I'm not saying you're making that mistake, but I was like shocked that I, I, my kid comes home with cuss words and, and I'm like, where'd you get that? I sent you over there right. so you didn't get that. And that was dumb on yeah, my I, part. That, yeah. uh, truth, yeah. I was naive. Yeah. yeah. Right. I understand that. Yeah. So I, got, I have one other, can I ask you one other question? Sure. Okay. So when she leaves there, this is her 10th year. She's in her 10th year. And if she does leave and go to the, the, the Christian school, they don't have a pension plan there, obviously. It's just, you know, you like a regular 403B, I believe. Um, and so if she leaves the school, I'm not, we're not quite clear, but if she left before the school year is over this year, she might lose her small benefit of the pension because once you have 10 years, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't make my decision based on that. I'd make my decision on based on what's, what's the right path for my life. Don't let a little pension like that dictate this there's more important things here to consider if i'm in your shoes yeah, they've, they've they're fed up with their district big time aren't they yeah they just they feel like they need a haven yeah they gotta get away it sounds like something bad it sounds like it's bad this is the ramsey show
If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000. All thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. personality, number one best-selling author and author of the brand new book coming out November the 9th, From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Work You Love. He's my co-host today. You can get that at RamseySolutions.com. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Carlton and Felicia are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Hey Hey. Dave. Welcome, welcome. (laughs) Where do you guys live? Houston, Texas. All right, welcome to Nashville. And all the way up here to do a debt-free scream, how much did you pay off? We paid off 263127 roughly, $1,000. Wow. Cool. How long did that take? Take us... Uh, six years. Yeah, six years. All right. Yeah. Good, good. And your range of income during that time? I think we started out about uh, 148 and uh, we expect to end this year around uh, 210 Excellent. Wow. What do you guys do for a living? I'm an RN. Mm-hmm. And uh, I work in what's called on-the-ground construction sales. Okay, good for you. Well done. So what kind of debt was this 263000 I can probably tell you what it was not a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> it was everything. Everything. You were normal. Normal, very normal. Okay. Yeah. Does this include your house? This does yes. include the house. Oh, look at it here, people! <laughs> You talking to her? (laughs) (laughs) I'm talking about both of you, man. You got a paid-for house. I love it. That's weird. Yes, we do. So proud of you. Very, very cool. The grass does feel different, by the way. I bet it does. (laughs) I bet it does. Good for you. That's fun. Excellent, excellent work. Okay, so what put you guys on this whole Ramsey journey six years ago? Well, I'll I'll try to make it short, but um, I, I used to hear your name. But it was always negativity kind of behind it. Mm-hmm. and uh, That still happens, by the way. <laughs> a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, Miguel Morales, uh, best friend, mentioned you once on a phone call. Actually mentioned you, a girl he was dating, their parents had gone through your system. Mm-hmm. And he was thinking about doing it. And uh, I've known him since high school. And because he was thinking about it, I said, hey, I'm going to do it. Because I was looking for a way to kind of get us right. We've been married 26 26, it'll be 27 years years next month. Yeah. And we hadn't really gotten financially right. And uh, we started there. I listened to your podcast for like a month, uh, driving in and uh, and then back from work and just hearing the folks come on here and doing the deaf feet scream. And I just said, you know, we could do that. You know, I I love it. Yeah. So that's kind of what got us got us started. Very cool. So, uh, Felicia, he comes home and says, I've been listening to this podcast, and this Morales guy said, and uh, you said, y'all are all crazy. Did you or not? Or did you just say, let's do it? Uh, no, no. It took me a long time. <laughs> okay. It took me a long time for him to kind of get me on board. He kept mentioning it, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, we're doing fine, you know. Um, and over time, you know, he just kept explaining what it was, um, trying to explain where we could be if we followed your your plan. Um, he kind of started it, and then, you know, I was kind of in the background. Um, I, I can say that, um, you know, he, he was persistent, 
and yeah. over time kind of wore me down and i was like all right fine what is this tell me about it yeah and, and then here you are with a house paid for mm -hmm. yeah the, the, uh, it doesn't take long being around carlton to know he's kind of goal driven yes and kind of gets her done yes and so you're like oh here we go yes <laughs> <laughs> so i want to ask you so I, I, we all get that you gave in you're like all right at what point did you say giddy up and go okay now i get this i'm in I think once I started seeing our smaller debt being paid off and, you know, just seeing, okay, maybe this, this will work. Mm. Um, we paid, we got to the point where we paid off our one major credit card that we had. Mm -hmm. And um, I still made him hold on to it probably for a good year before I let him cut it up. Mm -hmm. I had a just pry because, from her hands. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, I was just so scared. I just, you know, had that what if thinking. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it got close to a year, and I was like, all right, we're good. We, we don't need it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good for you guys. And along that way, Dave, um, our daughter, we, we, she actually went to college all four years, debt-free, cash wow. flowed 100%. And no, wait a minute. That's not possible. You, you can't do that. <laughs> it's against the law, isn't it? I think. But, yeah. you know, a lot of people think it is. Yeah. yeah. How did you do that? Well, we, we put a plan together. We, <gasps> we, Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> what is this plan you speak what of? What is this plan thing? It yeah. <laughs> starts with a little piece of paper and a pen. Yeah, right. And uh, it says, no, you're not going to that school. Yes, you're going to that school. Um, exactly how we did it was she did her first two years of uh, community college. Yep. Uh, actually, even before that, before getting out of high school, she had college credit. So yep. She, she took dual credit in high school. Then she did community college for the first two years. We cash flowed everything else. She actually played paid the last two years tuition 100 percent. she paid that uh, she we, worked she saved up her money yeah, we paid what, her what, what is she doing when she was working what kind of job she worked at a h-e-b grocery, grocery store mm -hmm. and was a tj maxx or something yeah? like that okay yeah. so no no big money job no just worked a lot just and watched what she was doing yeah so what's her degree in she has a uh, marketing degree right Woo! wow there it is that's fantastic there it is I love it. And, um, and you know, the, what is this plan you speak of? There it is right there. I like it. See, yeah. Yeah. That's the opposite of what you're going to see on Borrowed Future. Mm -hmm. That's well done, you and guys. And Dave, actually, when she graduated college, the school sent her a check. Oh, yes. Yeah, she got money. She, was, she got a check from the school. Mm -hmm. Paid her. That did not happen to me. Yeah, I'm unaware of this policy. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I'll be right back. I got to make a phone call. <laughs> I think I missed something here. I must have changed my address too quick. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, way to go, y'all. That's so. You got to be proud of her. I'm proud of her. She's Very a hero. Proud. Mm -hmm. And uh, when your kids do smart and kids do well, that's about as good as it gets as a parent. Yes. Very well done. And you guys with a paid for house. How old are you guys? Well, I'm 48 and she's not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great answer. This guy's smart. Not he's only disciplined, quick. he's smart. He's quick. Yeah. That's that uh, military. I was in the military. There it is. <laughs> it. Yeah. It. And so, bottom line is, though, you have paid for a house. Yes. yes. And uh, that's a pretty cool thing. And, you know, making a couple hundred a year and your daughter's gone through school debt free. Your, your lives are in good shape. You guys have done a great job. I'm, you're just heroes. Thank you. Very well done. Very well done. Wow. I love it. What do you tell people the secret to getting out of debt is, Felicia? I would say just persistence, um, believing in the plan, um, writing things down, and, you know, allowing yourself to see that it is possible and there is um, light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And just being connected, you know. We hear a lot of stories, you know, like ours where one spouse is into it the other one's not um but once you guys get connected and start working it together um anything is possible yeah it, it does speed up it does it does speed up when you do that so well done guys whoop, whoop, whoop. what's this house worth uh i think uh somewhere around 280 300 depending on what it. day of the week it is i love it yeah <laughs> really these days that's for sure well way to go you guys way to go and you brought the kiddos with you to cheer with you and we bought two of so the three two. two of the three okay two of the three. And, and their names and ages this uh, is this is uh little carlton mm -hmm. uh that's taller than you yes. yeah that's little carlton 14 he's 14 good gosh <laughs> <laughs> And Sierra. Sierra! 23. With a marketing wow. degree. If you want to move to Nashville, we'll talk to you. <laughs> I love it. Come Very on. well done. All right, Carlton, Felicia, Sierra, and little Carlton. 
that's bigger. Okay, I love it. And <laughs> 263000 paid off in six years. House and everything, 148 to 210 A whole family decided to change their lives, and they did it. So proud of y'all. We got a copy of The Legacy Journey for you. That's the next chapter in your story. Baby Steps Millionaires, you're going to be before you know it. And, of course, another copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away and interrupt someone else's life with all that negative Dave Ramsey talk. <laughs> so count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're We're dead free! Yeah! Oh, I love them. So good. What a great family. Woohoo! Yeah! That is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Boom! This is the Ramsey Show. Coleman Ramsey personality joins me this hour. Ken, what's really important with that last segment was not only have they paid off their home and not only have they increased their income fifty, sixty thousand dollars during that period of time, and not only have they changed their family tree, but the proof is there when their daughter's whole trajectory for her education was changed. Yeah, yeah. They, and they, they, they applied common sense and a plan. The kid worked. She got credits, AP credits that applied. She went to community college. She's got a degree in marketing and zero debt. She is so set up, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And if you look at where she is on the outset, which is so beautifully bright, nobody cares that she went to community college for two years. Nobody cares. It won't come up. It won't come up. She's bright. They're going to hire her for what she can do. She's going to do great things. And I think, again, this is another successful family that just decided to not do it the way everybody else does it. They said, that doesn't make sense. This is what makes sense. One of the things Seth Godin says in the new documentary that's coming out next week, Borrowed Future, is that uh, people pay for schools not based on the fact that they're better but because they're famous he calls them famous colleges he said don't pay for a famous college because here's the thing even when you're dealing with uh something that is an academically oriented career field let's say you're an architect that's an academically oriented you're a medical doctor an md that's academically oriented you're an attorney academically oriented Uh, you're a veterinarian which some would say is more difficult to become than an MD because an MD only has to one, learn one species. And so, um, uh, but either way, these are not, these are all very, very bright people, very intellectual people in order to become those things. I have never gone into a doctor's office in my life and asked where they went to school. All I want to know is, can you make it stop hurting? <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> That's right. I have never called an attorney and said, you know, based on where you went to school, we're going to win this lawsuit. All I want to know is, can you whip their butt? Uh, Are you mean (laughs) and nasty? (laughs) And will you absolutely intellectually dominate the other side? That's really all I care about. You know, I mean, can you do your job Mm -hmm. is all that an employer cares about. A customer cares about. That's exactly right. Same thing with us, with a doctor, a dentist. It's all about competence. And uh, we have made it about the brand. We've made it about the experience. And all those things are great if you can afford them and pay cash. And if you can't, they are absolutely worthless. They're not even that great then. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. The value is just not there. Yeah. I mean, when you take... Vanderbilt University is seventy thousand dollars a year. University of Tennessee is ten thousand dollars a year, right now. Wow. Okay. Is it is it is it is it academically superior? Probably. Is it seven x superior? Not a chance. No. I know this because I graduated from the University of Tennessee. People that graduate from Vanderbilt work for me. <laughs> you know, I know that that's true. So <laughs> yeah. it, it's like. 
they're on my payroll. Yeah. And and that's not being arrogant or mean. It's just the point is it that's not what put me here. No. Was where I went to school. Um, and it didn't hold me back no. where I went to school. It wasn't a stumbling block where I went. The question was, did I learn anything while I was consuming all that beer? That was the only question. <laughs> it's the only thing that came up. <sighs> Open phones this hour. I love that family. They yeah. were so inspiring. Yes, great family. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Eric is with us in Tampa, Florida. Hi, Eric. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thanks, dude. Thanks, Ken. Thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? Uh, my question is a pretty simple one. Uh, I'm considering, well, I'm going to move home back to Michigan and be closer to family, but I am curious. I want to get a condo, and I don't know if there's a good ratio or a rule of thumb when it comes to how much I should spend or how much how much is too much when I consider HOA fees. Uh, if, if, they, if they are disproportionate to... What uh, the payment would be on the normal condo? I mean, if you've got a a, right. a, a, a condo that the normal payment is fifteen hundred on, and the HOA fees are are a thousand bucks a month, then that's disproportionate. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to want to know that there's something screwed up, right? Uh, so, right. I, uh, other than that, what I would be most concerned about is I probably, since you asked, I, I probably would look at if I'm worried about it at all, I'd probably look at the annual budget on the on the HOA. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll give you an example. I had a condo that I owned. Uh, we bought a condo in Knoxville because our kids were in school down there, and we were going back and forth to football games and see see kids in school. And uh, they were not setting money back to replace the parking lot and the roofs. And so when it came up, we got hammered with special assessments. But the HOA fees were strangely low. Okay. You see, so you have Is to be something- concerned. You kind of have to be concerned the other way too. Right. Is that something that I can request from the HOA before making a purchase? Oh, absolutely. You can have the agent pull the budget for you. What's the annual budget gotcha. look like? Perfect. And make sure that they're, if you're going into a condo, make sure they're doing, setting aside for capital improvements. Whatever the, the condo is responsible for, which is usually the exterior pieces. It'll be uh, some okay. landscaping. It'll be roof, siding, uh, parking lots, those kinds of things. And make sure they're setting money back for replacement. Because if things got a 10-year life, you ought to be setting aside a tenth of it every year, right? So sinking fund is what it's right. called. And so, uh, okay. and if they're not doing that, that's a concern. The other thing, the other side of it is, are they just going cray cray because they're they're you know, they, they're spending too much because they're trying to be something they're not. They're trying to build the Taj Mahal, uh, this dinky butt little condo, you know, or something right. like that. And so you you just, you got to check it on the other side. Are they overspending on something? And then that'll tell you it, how well it's being managed. I would worry about one that didn't have professional management assisting the homeowner's operated board. If the homeowner operated board does it by themselves, that's where you get into the most uh, bizarre stories that I've gotten into anyway on HOAs and properties we've owned. Uh, I hate them. I hate them. Uh, most of them are just a total pain in the butt. It's like local politics, those that you're talking about. You know, Larry, worse. Larry, the control freak's in charge. And you're it's like, like, oh, it's boy. like student body government in junior <laughs> high school. <laughs> it's just, it's just yuck. Yeah, the guy who really shouldn't. <laughs> Should not he? He's the you know he hasn't got anything else to do. He no. gets put in charge. That's exactly he's the czar. Yeah, and it and just he, never. And turns then he's out. running around checking everybody's bushes for the correct diameter, <laughs> and it just just makes me want to shoot. You're in my yard again, Harry. Get out of my yard. You know. Oh God. And it's just that guy. But that that's the stuff I can't stand in those things. And um, oh, I don't even want to talk about it. But anyway, the um, yeah, that that's the stuff you got to be careful of. Is how's the politics of the thing running? Uh, how's it operated? Is it professionally managed? Are they saving too much for something? Are they spending too much on some things? Are they not setting anything back on the other? Because you'll get a special assessment later, or you'll get a reputation of the roofs are all leaking and they don't have the money to fix them, and they didn't do a special assessment. So now the condo project gets a bad reputation, or the home, the subdivision gets a bad reputation because the pond is always full of scum or whatever and uh then you can't sell the house because the hoa becomes the the detriment to the the value of the property and um yeah you got to watch it um you know by and large it's just um a bunch of little uh most of it's not a problem but except just the the emotion around it and being told what to do in a house i paid for and stuff like that that just i'm just 
I guess I'm a libertarian or something or whatever you call that. I don't know what you call it. Like, like I own this, so leave me alone. Kind of, I'm that guy. Whatever it is, I know I'm an old guy. Get off my lawn. That's what say, I am. Yeah, well, that's need, exactly what yeah, I am. You Get off the my lawn, Harry. Yeah. Quit measuring my bushes. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly who I am. I'm that guy. <laughs> I'm, except I'm the Clint Eastwood version. Oh, right? for yeah, sure. There, for sure. He's packing. I feel like I hear that. Shh, shh. Yeah, I hear that. And you're in the rocking chair. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I just, it's, um, I still don't understand. I, we got, we cut a tree down uh, on one of our properties and I found out that apparently that was illegal. Yeah, um, you didn't read the fine print. I wasn't, wasn't tacked to the tree, oh. <laughs> and I was all confused. I thought I owned the tree. It's a good and so, point. You know, but the the tree Nazi lady came out, and God Almighty, oh man, there you go. You know, and that's whoo. Old to I be a fly I, I, on I, the I wall. I think I could have shot her dog, and I probably gotten in less trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That one's pretty dicey. <laughs> <laughs> Probably neither one's a good idea, <laughs> yeah. but what do I know? Yeah. Oh, that definitely puts this hour in the books. <laughs> Ken Coleman, James Charles, and Kelly Daniels. This is the Ramsey Show. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. You can listen to all our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. Browse by topic or even sync clips to your friends. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, co-host of the Ramsey Show today, is host of the Ken Coleman Show, which is heard on over 75 radio stations across America, Sirius XM, and of course, a very popular podcast and YouTube program as well. New book coming out in November. It's on pre-sale right now. Check it out. From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Work You Love. Again, the phone number here, 888 825 Robin is with us. Robin is in Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, Robin. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So I'm in a strange situation. My husband and I, we just recently started the Baby Steps, um, which I want to say thank you for, because your program finally convinced him that it was stupid to be sa- to be re- saving for retirement while we still had debt, um, and which means I won. Um, so very excited to be paying that, all that off. Good. Um, but um, we, I am a research analyst for um, an agency in the intelligence community which makes me a government contractor. So this vaccine requirement is kind of coming down the pike for me. And I'm not one of the people that's willing to get it. And I was wondering what your suggestion would be about pausing, paying on our student loans and trying to like kind of save up some money for my impending unemployment if this were to continue forward. Well, how far are we talking to the future? You think this is a month, two months, six weeks? What are you hearing? Um, so the emails that we've gotten um, are early December. And, of course, that that's all subjective, right? So, I mean, yeah. I haven't seen the actual executive order come out yet. I haven't you – know, There's a, the lawsuits aren't done yet. I mean, there's, there's, there's a million things that could happen, but I'm, I'm a planner, yeah. and – if I get fired from this job because for this reason, I don't have skills to get paid the same level outside of government work. How do you know um, that? How do you, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I want you to answer that. How do you know that as a research analyst in the kind of work you do that that's not transferable outside? Well, I'm specifically um, a language-enabled research analyst, Chinese language um, for future threats technologies. 
so it's not there's not a huge market out there for that. Now I could apply my language and that abilities to other things, but they wouldn't pay on the same. I scale. totally understand, but let me also share with you that yes that's a super super specific position but the fact of the matter is chinese language and that that linguistic skill aside you're really good at research you're, you're really good at, at, at analyzing things true or false true well I, i'm just going to challenge you that uh what you do you know, make now um i'm making eighty thousand, and this is my the, basically an entry level um i'm i'm in line for you know do this for a year and they bump you up about 20 grand so yeah have you done any research out in the marketplace to see what's out there near 80 grand doing that type of work forget the, the uh, specific yeah. nature I, I mean i don't know about research i did look for a job for eight months when we got kicked out of china to come back here because of covid in the first place um and i was unsuccessful i finally found a job in local government doing what well, i i really enjoyed it um but it paid about half of what i'm making now um so i I don't know about research, but I know that it's really, really hard to get a job with Chinese language research analysts and not a ton of of, um, of uh, experience in the in the field. Sure. Well, again, I'm gonna I'm I'm really gonna challenge you. You are a researcher by nature, and I think you've got to take this really serious. I think just to assume, well, I'm gonna have to. This is all I'm gonna have to pause my baby steps to try to weather this, as opposed to what can I do that's proactive. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that's what you've got to be doing right now. And I think you have so much experience and so much skill that's transferable. You've got to be looking into what corporate jobs uh, that are are good fit for me, and if I'm making seventy. Uh, but I think mm -hmm. just to assume that you can't make eighty. I think that's uh, you got some more work to do on that. I really would challenge you to do some homework. Okay. Yeah, and I, 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 while you're doing that, I have to agree with your initial idea too. I'm gonna stop the baby steps and pile up cash because I'm gonna until you land something else. You know, I think there's a real high, heavy probability you're gonna be done there if you're unwilling yeah. to be vaccinated. And yeah. so, um, I think the president has made it pretty obvious what his intent is on that. And mm -hmm. uh, the only question is whether he is, has the power to pull it off or not before he gets right. slammed with 5,000 or 50,000, you know, cha constitutional challenging uh, lawsuits, which is what's going to happen. But the question mm -hmm. is, that, is that going to save your job? I don't I don't know. And I, I would be pretty pessimistic about that in this environment. So, yeah, I'm going to stop and pile up cash. But I'm also going to start reanalyzing how your skills fit into the marketplace at Ken's suggestion and see if you can't land something um, that's there. Maybe even some some independent things that aren't government contracts, but maybe you're just contracting out uh, to defense contractors and so forth. But even those, I think the, uh, the president's going to try to, anything that touches the federal government is going to try to hit it. And uh, so it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a lot of, arguing going on before things are decided it's not as easy as the stroke of a pen um in a democracy so <clears throat> right or wrong that's going to be your facts so um yeah i'm going to pile up cash for a while here until until i, I feel like i've got a greater than 50 percent chance of staying um and and then once you've got that then you know you can calm down a little bit roxanne is with us in san antonio hi roxanne welcome to the ramsey show Hello. I'm a new listener, but I uh, recently moved in with my parents, but I have a house that I could rent, but it's at 4.875% interest right now. But I need to do some repairs on it, and I needed to know if I should just sell the house yes, or if I should keep it as a rental property. Why did you move in with your parents? My father has Alzheimer's. Oh, I'm sorry. And so I need to be there to help. Mm. I, I mean, I like the house. It's in a good neighborhood. It's, it's actually a nice house. Except for the part where it needs repairs. It needs a few repairs. What is what is the how much repairs? Probably fifteen thousand dollars. And what is your income? Fifty eight thousand. Okay. You have any money? Uh, I have about two hundred fifty in a four hundred one k. And I do have retirement with my job, and um, I am probably tenish thousand dollars, other thousand dollars in debt. How old are you? Um, Fifty nine. Okay. But the house is worth probably 
230 and I owe 80 on it. Okay. Well, I mean, you, if I'm in your shoes, I got a couple options. One is I can sell it and get rid of the burden of fooling with a house and fooling with renovations and fooling with renters while I'm helping my dad with Alzheimer's. It sounds like a lot. Um, if you're if you're going to keep it, you're going to end up using some of your retirement money, which you can pull out and pay taxes on now, and fix it up and then rent it. But I'm not sure I would do that if, just from a life standpoint. If I were in your shoes, it sounds like you got a lot on you, honey. This is the Ramsey Show. serving Christian Health Cost Sharing Ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. Interesting, haven't they? Interesting is one word. A lot of other words you could say, but yeah. People are worried. They're scared. Wondering what's going to happen next. You're going to lose your job, lady just saying. A number of people, they're just getting completely, their careers are just getting obliterated. It's, it's enough to stretch you thin, it really. It doesn't have to be this way. Listen, if you've got a plan and you're sitting on a pile of money, and you have no debt and stuff happens, it changes the way, it changes your situation. It changes your peace level. You're the third pig in the brick house when the big bad wolf comes by. You go, well, you can huff and puff, but, you know, we're still going to be in here versus you're going to get your whole world obliterated. So, listen, we've been giving people this plan for a long time, and almost 10 million people have gone through Financial Peace University to learn how to build the brick house basically and we're going to teach you everything you need to know to save money get out of debt and become wealthy and outrageously generous in the process you can stream the lessons on your own or get support by going through the class with other people and you can you do all this by putting it into practice with the world's best budgeting app the premium version of our every dollar budgeting app by syncing your bank to your budget you can easily track your spending and all of this comes only with a Ramsey Plus membership. So if you want a free trial to Ramsey Plus to get to Financial Peace University, every dollar, everything else, text TRIAL to 33789. You can get a free trial of Ramsey Plus. Start watching the Financial Peace University videos, everything. Text TRIAL to 33789. Bozeman, Montana is with us. Kyle is on the line. Hi, Kyle. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So I'm in a, a bit of a pickle. Um, I'm glad Ken is there because his show is about as hard to get on as this one. So um, I have a, a opportunity to take another job right now. Um, I'm currently self-employed, but um, this other job is in a field that I went to school for, and and the salary is a little bit less, but there is potential to grow because I'm starting – a uh, new division for this this company, uh, the commercial construction division. Um, they've they've done residential for the uh, last ten years. Now they want to do commercial, and they've they've kind of headhunted me and found me to to start this division for them. Uh, I'm just not sure if I should stay self employed or take this other job. I think you probably are, and I think your head and heart are probably having a little bit of a wrestling match. So they are, yeah. And so, what's your head telling you? Uh, my head's telling me to take it yep. because the, the potential there is starting that. Uh, the salary will come, yep. um, but it, it would just be a little bit of a blow initially for the first three three months, I mean, 60 to 90 days until we have a, a evaluation 
um, pay evaluation, mm-hmm. and we, and we can float that with our savings, the the pay difference. Sure, and but, but your heart. Be, what what are you making now? Mind. What would you be making there? Uh, by the end of the year, this year it'd be about one ten take home, and and doing that other job, um, it'd be eighty four before taxes. And then what would the bump get you to after that period that you're saying? That's what, I, that's what kind of I'm unsure about, um, whether they could get up to that 110 to 4 taxes even um, or not. So what I'm trying to understand is why is your head telling you to take that? I think I know the answer, but I want you to hear yourself say it versus your heart saying stay and run your company. Yes, the, I don't know, the potential of, of doing that, and I've worked so hard in school go start this or to go manage this branch and i I used to do that do you love what you do now for yourself i do um but i'm a trim carpenter so it's kind of hard on my body and doing that would be more of a desk job and i could work from home 80 percent of the time yeah but um, does this any part of this my wife at home any part of this new job the work itself when you think about it and you run it through your mind gets your heart pounding like you know, being a carpenter or potentially hiring other carpenters and you become a, a true leader of other carpenters, does does the yeah, new job and, attract your heart at all? Be honest. Yeah, it does. I I love that type of work and when I did it in the past it was it was great. I, the only reason I left it in the past was the atmosphere and this new company, the atmosphere is much different and they're a Christian based company which which is big for me and my family, so they I mean, the atmosphere is a lot better, so I think it would turn out a lot better, and I, I enjoyed the work when I did it previously. Okay. Well, so now it sounds like your heart is more involved, and initially you said it wasn't. So I think this comes down to if you can weather the financial change, and it really is something, and you're not clear on that, so I'd find out. I mean, this is not something we're going to walk into and take that kind of hit with the hope that it turns into something. You know, I—, I that would be my take. There's a tremendous shortage of people in the construction industry right now. Um, I think you just need to go back to them, tell them they need to match your pay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And let me tell you what. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what's stopping you from doing that. Uh, this business you're running, you're, you're. I can hear it in your voice. You're. You're emotionally exhausted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're tired, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and a famous general said, fatigue makes cowards of us all. Been there myself, my brother. I know how you feel. And so you're not you're not walking in there with quite the swagger for this interview that I want you to have. I want you to, when you get off the phone, practice walking across the room with more of a strut. And then call these guys and tell them you want 110 to start. They're going to give it to you. Okay. Yeah. Is that, well, the, the initial offer was only 79, yeah. and I countered back to them at 90, and Wah. then they came down to the 84. So Let me tell you, there, there are things in the construction world that have almost doubled in the past eight months, and pay for some things is one of them. I'm building an event center up here, and the dadgum steel, the bill on the steel just came in, and it's just astronomically over budget. It's just gone bananas out there. And mm-hmm. it, there's a shortage. Of, every industry is facing labor shortages. Every industry is facing them. The construction industry, chief among them, they can't find people to do what they want you to do for what they're offering to pay you. Kyle, I, I want to ask you something. What would need to be true? Give me the quick answer for you to make 50% more next year or in this next 12 months owning your own business what would need to be true for you to make more money and not have to do all the work yourself um i i had to find more contracts which is kind of a, a shortage here i guess a um, shortage a of, of work in the tra- construction well, business no, not a not a shortage of work but there's there's five or six really good trim guys that have all of the big contracts so all of the work that i've picked up is one or two houses a year so it'd be kind of hard to, uh, or one or two, you know, the, the people do one or two houses a year. Um, yeah. So there's no really big developments that I can get into at yeah. the moment. Yeah. And then and then hiring somebody and paying the workman's comp and, and all that. There, there's a couple of negotiating techniques that people use when they're negotiating price. 
the mistake people make when they're negotiating prices, the first thing they do is that he names one price, you name another, and we meet in the middle. That usually doesn't work well. Instead, before you engage in that as your final step, I want you to engage in, I've been thinking about this, and I really appreciate the 84. It's a very generous offer. Guys, I'm making 110 right now. Tell me the best you can do. This is just not going to work. I, I just, you know, tell me what you can do. And don't put a number out there. Just tell them what you're making now and just see. I'll bet you that one four-minute conversation makes you ten grand. i am just yeah. betting you. And I'm more confident in you right now than you are in you. Yeah, does it hurt that I already countered back with 90? I don't know. Does you're going to figure out, you're gonna have to figure out a way to couch it so it doesn't feel like you're... Um, you know that you're you're backing out on that but i think you're taking the job i just hate for you to take a pay cut because there's no need in a business that's got a labor shortage it just doesn't it's not logical i i gotta tell you dave i wouldn't take it i don't hear oh that. you don't think i'll take it at all i don't think he takes it his heart's in the owning his own business he's got an opportunity i think it's the easiest way out right now it's not the best way out hmm. i'd pass we're hearing different things yeah okay interesting i'll let the career guy make the decision because that way I won't be wrong. I don't know that I'm right. I just want to hurt. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices, and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Hello. Anna is with us. Hi, Anna. How are you? I am wonderful, Dave. How are you? Ah, better than I deserve. Good to have you. Where do you live? I live in Mountain Home, Idaho. Which is near? Boise. Boise. About an hour away. Yeah, very cool. I was just with some Boise people this week. Wonderful. Good to have you. How much debt have you paid off? Just over $35,000. Whoop, whoop. How long did that take? Uh, 24 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? I started out about uh, 23 to 24. And then we'll end this year at about 50000 Good for you. What do you do for a living? I'm a children's pastor as well as a property manager. Ah, good. I love it. What kind of debt was the $35,000? Uh, well, Dave, Sally Mae was living in my guest bedroom. I bet so, she was. All student loans. I love it. Okay. So how long have you been out of school? Uh, well, just about uh, three years now. Okay. So a year in to adulthood. After school, you look up and there's thirty-five thousand dollars worth of debt. Uh, how'd you get tied into the whole Ramsey idea? Well, actually, a year before, um, while I was in college, I had taken FPU, okay. and I kind of told myself, um, you know, I'll get to that when, when I'm I done get out of college. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. get to it when I'm done. That's fair. And uh, a year passes by. I've been working and um, paying the minimum on my payments for the six months, and um, I end up working three jobs in the summer and I'm uh, mowing yards on top of my other two. Wow. And um, I'm in a moment where I'm mowing about 9.30 at night, the sun's going down and I'm trying to beat, uh, beat the sun going down to get the yard finished. And it was an I've had it theme hour that I was listening to. <laughs> so basically you were just yelling at me, I've had it for like an hour long. And I, I realized at that point that a year ago I had said I would get to this and uh, 
a year later, I still had nothing to show for it, and mm. I was all of my money was just going away. Yeah. It was just going, and I was working these three jobs, and it seemed for naught. Yeah. And so that was the moment that I decided I've had it. I'm done. Um, I put a note on my bedroom door that said, Sal or my guest bedroom door that said Sally May's room, so that every day when I walked out Ooh. and I saw that. Oh, ho, ho. yep. There's a visual. <laughs> yep, that was right across from my bedroom door, and so with, I saw with an that. eviction notice. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> so that's kind of how that got started. Wow, I love it. I love it. And so you you got out the old Financial Peace University materials, blew the dust off of them, yep. and went after it. Yep, and listened to you at every every side hustle I did, every job. I was continually listening to the podcast, and every time uh, somebody was doing a debt-free scream, I was just envisioning myself here in this moment. Wow, and there you stand. There, here I stand. You know, yes. I, I, I've never asked this before to a debt-free screamer. What was it like moments ago when you stepped up there to get ready to do this? Did you run through all those odd jobs, all those crazy hours? What, what went through your mind? Yeah, I was telling my dad actually just earlier today that um, envisioning those moments ahead of time, man, all all day long, they've been going through every job that I did. Wow. Where honestly, I, I would listen to Debt Free Screams and just be in tears as I would envision this moment. As I look up and the, the plaques here has uh, live like no one else, right? This is only the beginning. Look and at uh, you. this is it. You are a fantastic Woo. young lady. Wow. What was the hardest thing you went through? Um, I think I'm, I'm very much an experiential person. And so when I spend money, it's, um, and I'm, I'm very much a spender, um, I spend on experiences. And so uh, probably saying no to people, um, I spent a lot of dinners at my parents' house, um, a, lot of, a lot of time saying no to different events or different things. And I think that was the hardest part mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. That self-awareness is what got you there. Mm. That's pretty amazing. Man, you're a rock star. Wow, you're on fire. That's fun. Got me choked up. Stand up there thinking about all those jobs and all the hard work and all the sacrifice to get here. Was it worth it? Oh, absolutely. Undoubtedly. How's it feel to be free? Um, it feels insane. It feels like I got the whole world ahead of me and I can I can move forward in everything that God's got planned. It's Amen. awesome. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Good for you. How old are you? I'm 26. And 100% debt free. Yes, sir. Wow. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Well, uh, the biggest thing for me was how often you said, children do what feels good, and adults devise a plan and stick to it. And then to tell myself, you're an adult, so stick to it. And uh, I think that's, yeah, that's um, one of the things that's just a reminder. And I, I put it on a blackboard at my house, and it just said, you're an adult. You're an adult. Make decisions and stick to it. And then I would say again, um, envisioning this moment, envisioning the end goal and going, where is it that I'm going? Where is this moment? Uh, and then reliving that constantly. Um, it, there probably wasn't a week that went by that I was listening to a debt-free scream and envisioning myself here. Uh, you guys at home can't see it because the cameras aren't trained on it, but her mom and dad are sitting just off camera, and I'm afraid her dad's going to explode. His yeah. chest is so, oh, yeah. he's so proud. Sure. His mom's so proud, and they ought to be. They ought to be. Mm. You're, you're somebody to be proud of. Wow, I'm proud of you. This is very, very cool. Good for you. That's pretty stinking impressive. Uh, yeah, I, I, the vision this young lady had. Yeah. I hope you all heard that. That yeah. was a world-class speech, by the way. Yeah. I don't think you realize how, how I much want her, depth. I want her teaching the kids at our children's I pastor. I promise I'm just saying, you. Yeah. yeah, you've got some tremendous depth Boom. that comes from somewhere. But, but uh, that vision is what got you here. Wow. Incredible. Powerful. Wow. Powerful. Very powerful. Very, 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 very well done. And so uh, I, I don't know if I have to ask, other than your parents, I guess I should say, <laughs> who were your biggest cheerleaders? They made the trip from Boise, Idaho yeah. with you to cheer you on, and they're proud, and they should be. But other than them, who was cheering you on? Um, my whole family. Uh, I've got a great church family, the Rock and Mountain Home. Um, a lot of them are listening now. They're super awesome. And my friends really just joining me in this journey. But my parents particularly, they didn't know this. I didn't really tell them. But for the whole two years, they were basically my ghost grocery plans. <laughs> so I'd just pop over for breakfast and then they're like, hey, I'm visiting. I think, I think they knew it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you yeah. noticed we're seeing more of Anna lately? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> the envelope's getting a little thin. Must be that time of the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Must I be suspect right they before were the okay paycheck comes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to see Anna soon. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's wonderful. Well, that's good. That's the kind of support that uh, when you know you've got it, it changes everything. Uh, there's a, a difference in that kind of support that propels you on versus loneliness and desperation, which will also motivate you. But it's just the fear driver that's different. And uh, th- that's a powerful thing you've done. So proud of you. Woohoo! You did it. I love it. Very, very well done. We got a copy of the Legacy Journey for you. That is the next chapter in your story. You've changed your whole legacy. And um, pretty stinking cool. Pretty stinking cool. Very articulate. Very well done. Copy of uh, the Total Money Makeover for you to give away to someone to interrupt their life because you know somebody who needs to be interrupted right now. Uh, Everybody does. And that book has been an interrupter, a disruptor for some time, and it'll help you do that for one of your friends or relatives or somebody. Well done, Anna, from Boise, Idaho. $35,000 paid off. Four jobs, three jobs, ghost grocery plan, the whole bit, 23000 to 50000 a year, and she is debt-free, 26 years old, rocking it. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free! <laughs> She is nominated for one of the best ones in a while. That's amazing. Wow. Well done. Powerful. And uh, so when I get to meet those and you get to meet those, Mm -hmm. if any of you want to uh, make it your hobby to run down the 20-somethings generation, the Zs and the millennials, uh, I'll have to remind you that I meet the ones that that disqualify your demographic. (laughs) It's true. As long as there are these out there, we gonna be okay, folk. <laughs> yeah. Wow! And there's a bunch of these out there. Unbelievable! They're out there, and we get to meet them here every week, every day. Not only on the debt free stage, but inside this building, working on our team, and uh, we get to meet them every day as we're out and about across America. There, there is a lot of power in this gem- generation. A lot of power. This is the Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Nahum 1-7, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, trust men and they will be true to you. Treat them greatly and they will show themselves to be great. Jonathan is with us in San Diego. Hi, Jonathan. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you. How are you doing? Good, man. What's up? Yeah, so... um uh, I have uh, about $45,000 worth of debt. Um, now, I'm not particularly concerned with it as of right now. Um, I, that, that debt is accrued uh, from student loans um, as I went to college uh, and got a uh, master's degree in chemical engineering. Um, but I've been having significant trouble finding work. Um, uh, not because you know I don't interview well or anything like that. I've, in fact, I've had uh, about half a dozen offers um over the last year that ended up getting rescinded uh because every time the company gives me an offer and then they go through a background check they find um some some charges in my background report that uh 
basically, you know, you know, they, they end up rescinding the offer as a result. So you got criminal charges? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, for what? Um, there are charges that stem from uh, uh, a domestic violence incident. Uh, they're they're all misdemeanor charges, granted, but um, uh, this incident occurred like two and a half years ago after finding out that my uh, ex girlfriend or girlfriend at the time was unfaithful. Okay, all right. And how long ago was that? Uh, about two and a half years. Um, my probation ends actually uh, in December in a few months. Um, okay. Well, I, I want to encourage on something. This is this is not surprising, but I, I'm actually sharing an article this week uh, on the Ken Coleman Show about how more and more companies, especially right now, uh, with the lack of uh, – employees available with 10.4 million jobs uh, available and 8.3 million people unemployed, uh, they are open to hiring people with a criminal background. Now, I, I'm going to tell you that it's it's not necessarily going to be easy, but this is uh, becoming more and more of a thing. And I think that, number one, you're going to have to take this by the horns, this bull by the horns. And so no longer when you go forward, are you waiting for a company to, see to do the research yeah. and find out about it. This is That's where what's killing you. Yeah, you've got to tell them on the upfront uh, when the interviews get good. And uh, I would, you know, they're calling you back and you start to make some headway. I would explain it. I would also go another step further. If you have yet to get some counseling, um, I would do that. And I would have a good counselor really, you know, pour into you and also vouch for you that that not only have you paid your uh you know, that your crime, your time on these misdemeanor charges, but that you're going the extra step to dealing with the anger issues that came from some obvious pain. I think if you own this, uh, I think you can overcome this. In fact, no, I don't think I know you can. Uh, and I'm going to give you one other piece of very practical advice. As you're going for these jobs in the future, and you may have already done this, but make absolutely sure that you are having people that know you well and can vouch for you that are that are taking you to these companies to say, hey, this is a really great guy. This is a a really great candidate and uh, he's overcome some challenges in the past but I can vouch for the character and the quality of this human being I think if you put all that together and you own this on the up front you got a much better chance yeah the that's exactly right and that's what's killing you here you've got to come out early in the process as soon as they start nibbling on the hook mm -hmm. you got to tell them what's going on and, and just all you have to do Jonathan is just think about what if you were hiring mm -hmm. in, under what circumstances would you hire a guy that had that record. If you thought he was past it, if you thought it was a one-time thing, if you thought it's never going to happen again, he's been seeing a counselor, it's in his past, everybody is screwed up one time or another in their life. And But, but if they don't think that you're past it and they think, oh, I'm going to have a guy in a Me Too world that, that's going to hit a girl, uh, nobody wants that on their payroll. You wouldn't want it on your payroll, right? Yeah. So you got to you got to weave the uh, a truthful story, a truthful narrative here that says, OK, now here's what you're going to find. You're going to find 18 months ago. And here's what happened. And here's what I've done since then. And uh, I'm perfectly clean. The probation's almost complete. Been seeing a coach and a counselor. Here's what she says. Here's a letter from them. And this is what you're going to find. If this makes it a no, if, if any, the fact that those charges are back there are going to kill the deal, we might as well kill it now because I want you to know now. And if you tell us that at Ramsey, we, you know, I, I'm a lot more concerned with what you're going to do in the future than I am what happened to you in the past. Because I hadn't met anybody that has an unblemished past. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about is, uh, are you going to be defined by that? And is this going to be a continued pattern? And then I've got to deal with it as your employer, because you're going to embarrass us by being in the news the next time that comes along. And I don't want you on the payroll. Uh, and plus, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to employ someone that's going to be doing that kind of stuff. And you don't either, Jonathan, do you? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. I, I I actually wanted to say uh, as um, uh, the the thing the reason mainly why I'm calling now and you know not after the first time this happened is uh, this most recent uh, uh, offer uh, that was rescinded uh, was at a company where I actually had. Um, uh, two people there vouching for me, and uh, um, I, you know, it's it's incredibly discouraging. That, uh, yeah, well, that's depressing, um, and that's a gut punch. Yeah, 
Did they tell them, though, yeah. and when they vouched for you, did they also tell them that you had some misdemeanors in your background? Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to tell you something. You did all That's you could the reality. do. Then. You did all you could do. But you don't quit. Somebody's going to give you, you a shot. You are not defined by the worst thing that you ever did. Yeah. None of us are. Hey, man, I filed bankruptcy. Now I give all of America financial advice. Go figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> How absurd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, the difference is, is that I learned from it. I've never been there again, and that makes me trustworthy. And the fact that I felt the pain of real life makes me trustworthy mm-hmm. uh, because I can relate to people who are hurting, which is like everybody, and or everybody has it one time or another because most everybody's done something stupid, right? So, you know, you got one of your stupid things out while you were young, mm. and it's in your past. Um you know, uh, m- most of us that are old have often commented that if Twitter and um, Instagram had been around when we were in college, none of us would be employable because <laughs> oh. there would be photographic uh, digital uh, evidence of our behaviors. So, um, yeah. Can you imagine when streaking was popular oh, <laughs> in the yeah. 70s? <laughs> yeah. Just the stuff we did to our friends that we thought was funny would be considered criminal level bullying and we were just being idiots and making each other laugh i mean uh, goodness gracious probably a lot of everything but yeah I, not not making light of or minimizing what you got convicted of that's not a good thing yeah and we're, we're not endorsing that uh but we are trying to give some grace so that you can give yourself some grace because you've already run into a lot of places that aren't going to give you grace yeah and so grace is i'm not defined by my past yeah. I'm not defined by my past. I get to make new decisions starting today, ready, set, go. I get to be a new kind of man, a new kind of woman starting today, ready, set, go. And so if that's you, dude, uh, you got our endorsement, and I think you'll get a job. But don't wait till they get far down into the interview process because then they feel tricked. Yep. They feel like you're trying to slide one in on them, and that doubles down then because you got deception and a criminal record is the way it feels from the employer's viewpoint. That's how I would feel yep. if, I were, if, I, if Ramsey were interviewing you. And then we get, hey, this guy's really talented, but we got way down into it before he brought this up. Uh, and one other encouragement. I don't know what your work situation is now. We didn't get into it, but I would stay active. Even though you're going for this over here, if it's got to work two, three jobs, don't let yourself fall into this. I don't matter anymore, and I'm a stain. That would be really discouraging. Absolutely. Keep staying with it. Do something until it pops. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep your feet moving. Keep your feet moving. You're going to be all right, brother. Yeah. You're going to be all right. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. 